and welcome to Catalyze Music Academy. My name is Zach Chris Thera. I'm an Ableton certified trainer. And it's been a while since we've done some sound design on the channel, so I figured I wouldn't go through a patch that I made a little while back that I think is interesting and fun to play around with. So this is my, what I'm calling my Blade Runner sound design patch. Not specifically based off Blade Runner, but it's the kind of sound you hear a lot in a lot of different like science fiction films and video games right now. Sounds a little like this. Which I think sounds really cool, regardless of whether you are doing uh, sound design for film or video or whatever, um, or you just like making weird kind of soundscapey music. So uh, this is what we're going to talk about. This is uh, all made with live devices, just a wavetable and a bunch of effects. So I'm going to go through how I made this, but I'm also going to make this downloadable for free. So if you want to just download it for yourself and try it out, uh, you can click on the link in the description below. Uh, but we're going to go through it so hopefully you guys can build it from scratch yourselves. So before we dive into that, I do want to let you know if you are enjoying the content on the channel, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. I greatly appreciate all the support the channel has been getting, and uh, it really helps just encourage me to continue making these videos for you guys. So diving right into it, uh, as I mentioned, it's just a wavetable plus a few different effects. We're going to go ahead and turn off the effects for right now so that way we can uh, focus on just what's happening inside a wavetable. But generally, it's a fairly straightforward patch to make. And uh, so we're going to be using just one oscillator for right now. And you can use almost any oscillator in Wavetable that you want. In this situation, I'm using in the collection folder, the Cobalt Wavetable. However, one of the great things about this is you can just start scrolling through different Wavetables and get all kinds of different sounds with barely having to do anything. And it gets lots of different results that I think generally sound pretty cool. Whichever way table you want, I personally recommend checking out the collection, the complex, and the distortion first, because I think there's lots of good ones in here, but it's really up to you. Although we're going to stick with the handy cobalt for right now. So inside our wavetable, we're not doing a whole lot of processing. Um, I am using the modern effect here with the warp just barely turned on and the fold just barely turned on. If you're not familiar with these two controls, I made another video on the channel about specifically these effects. They're really, really useful. Um, essentially, the warp is going to kind of stretch it. You can see kind of like that as you go up and down. And then the fold is going to kind of mirror it in the middle. And as you go up, it kind of continues to mirror it. So if we move these around, it does lots of cool, interesting processing here. And these are both being modulated by an LFO. So we'll come back to these later. Um, but if these are set to zero, I'm pretty sure the LFO doesn't do anything. So you need to make sure they're turned up at least a little bit in order to make the modulation work. So we'll come back to these in just a moment. The wavetable position is also not super important. I like it somewhere in the middle, but it's really up to you. Like I said, but any, any wavetable you want, almost any position should be totally fine. In terms of our filters, uh, it's also pretty straightforward. We're just using a notch filter on filter number one, somewhere in the middle with a little bit of resonance here. Uh, and this is also mapped to an LFO, so it's moving up and down as I play a note. Which is again, helping us add that nice kind of motion to our sound. Filter number two is just going to be a low pass filter. I'm just cutting off some of the highs here to make sure they're not too intense. I'm also using the MS2 mode here. Uh, this is going to be like an analog model mode. And once you turn that on, you get a drive control down here that I have cranked up 10 decibels. So this adds a lot of power to the sound. So without this, it sounds cool, but it's a little weak. But if I crank this, we get a lot more power out of it. So this is a great way to add a little bit of grit, a little bit of that like analog sound here. Uh, really fantastic tool. So that's mostly what I have going on between the oscillator and the filter. And then over in our matrix, I have four parameters that are mapped to one of two LFOs. Uh, LFO one is going to the oscillator position, which is what's allowing to, to move up and down. And then oscillator warp and fold, which are these two guys down here. Uh, one is being mapped to envelope LFO one and one to LFO two. So just to try this out real quick, and both just a little bit, uh, if just the oscillator position turned on, it's just going to move the waveform up and down. So you can see it moving up and down in the wavetable over here. But if I turn on warp, it's going to move it kind of like in and out. And then by having both of them turned on, 
we get this really interesting motion because it's kind of moving in and out and up and down at the same time, which is a really fantastic tool. And then if we get the fold involved here, uh, we can see it's also going to be doing that like this. Let's turn this guy up. You can kind of see it moving towards the center and back. So a combination of all three of those together. Again, amounts don't make a huge difference here. I like them to be a little bit subtle, but definitely uh, make sure they're audible. Everything works fine there. The only other place I have any modulation is going to be LFO2. The LFO2 is which is going to be controlling the filter frequency of our notch filter. So you can see our notch also moving up and down as I play a note. So that's it for modulation. Uh, checking out those LFOs, we have uh, LFO1 and 2 are both just sine waves. And the only thing I've done here is made them both really slow. This one is at 0.12 hertz, and this one's at 0.11 hertz. Again, you can customize these to your own taste, and that's totally fine. I just want them to happen over a long period of time as I'm uh, playing a note. So that's really all I've done there. Uh, other than that, uh, our volume envelope, I gave it about one, or I gave it about two seconds of attack here. And I also adjust the curve. So instead of it being just a straight line going up, I gave it a little bit of curve in the volume. So it kind of ramps up, which also adds a nice, interesting kind of uh, organic feeling to the volume. Uh, and then other than that, I also gave it about a second of release, but that's also kind of up to you where you want to put that. Uh, over here, I have it on polyphonic. That way, if I want to play it as some chords. I can play chords as well. And then in the unison mode, I have put this on shimmer mode, which is very similar to classic unison, except for this is going to add a little bit more randomization to uh, the tuning of our extra oscillators, uh, which also helps kind of just thicken it up a bit. So if this is set to none, sounds like that, which is OK. But on shimmer mode, gives it a lot more texture. and We can kind of customize this a bit. And those all, I think, sound pretty decent. But I like it with the middle number of voices, a decent amount. Cool. Uh, so that's really all that's going on inside the wavetable. Once we get over to the effects, the phaser is going to be doing also a bit of work for us uh, to add a little bit of that kind of motion to our sound. So the only real things I've done here is I have given it a little bit of feedback, um, kept it almost at 100% amount in terms of the LFO. I've changed the center to be around 300 hertz. So as we can see, if we move this up, it's going to be changing the position of our notches. Or lower down here. The only other thing I've really done here that I think is pretty important is the blend mode right here. The way this works is that this controls the direction of your notches when they're being affected by your LFO. So we can see the LFO is moving it, and it's moving towards the center and then away from the center. But if I move this down to zero, they are no longer moving towards the center. They're just moving left and right together. I personally think it sounds better when it, it's over in this mode. But just to hear what it sounds like, you can hear that kind of shifting up and down versus this. It's subtle, but I think it's important. I think it sounds good. Uh, and I like it better this way. But again, up to you. And then we have dry wet around 50%. Everything else is more or less the same inside the phaser. Up next, we have the hybrid reverb. Uh, this is doing a lot of the heavy lifting here to give it that nice kind of atmospheric cinematic quality. You get that really nice long tail and echo out off of this, which I think is really handy. In terms of what I have done here, so I gave it a bunch of pre-delay, I gave it about three uh, 357 milliseconds, and I also gave it a bunch of feedback, which I think helps kind of give it that more kind of atmospheric vibe. Uh, and then the only th other thing I've done in the convolution is switch this over to bigger spaces. And then I use the shimmering sky preset, which I think sounds really cool. And then over on the al algorithmic side, uh, I switched this to the tides mode. I cranked up the decay to about 11 seconds just to really make it give that long, huge tail. And then I tweaked a few of these settings here. I give it a little bit more size. I played with the tide control a little bit uh, just to switch it up a little bit and again, give it that 
big, huge atmosphere that I'm looking for, and I gave it about 50% dry wet. After that, I have a little bit of echo going on here to give it some delay. First thing I did was I switched this from the stereo mode to the mid side mode. So you have one delay coming down the middle and one delay coming down the sides, and they can be different. Uh, I changed the mids to be 16 notes and the sides to be eighth notes. So they're not linked. Normally they come linked together, so they're both the same timing. Uh, so now they are different from each other. And then uh, other than that, I gave it a little bit of a filter here and then turned the dry wet to around 40%. Which again, also adding in with the delay gives it that big, huge atmosphere. Which I think is really nice. Uh, and then up next, we have the chorus, which I have set to the ensemble mode, which is kind of new. I turned the amount up to around 80% and feedback to about 25%. This is also going to add a little bit of that motion, motion and shifting. It's being pretty subtle, so you probably won't hear it when the dry wet is around 30%. But if I turn this up way high, you can really hear it. You can hear it giving that kind of like wavy, pitchy sound. So find the amount that sounds best for you. And then lastly, we have the saturator just to beef it up a little bit more. Uh, I set this to be in soft sign mode with about six decibels of drive just to give it a little bit extra volume. And uh, just in case I like play a bunch of notes at the same time and it starts clipping, I have the soft clip turned on. Uh, which will prevent it from going above zero decibels. So now... There's my sci-fi pad sound design. And as I mentioned, we can go through these different wavetables and pick almost whatever we want. And they're going to sound really cool. We can try like complex, pick one kind of at random. And one of the things I like about this patch is it works great for bass sounds. You can play chords with it. Or you could play a more kind of melodic lead thing. Whatever you want. Uh, so yeah, if you are a fan of sci-fi sound design, you're a fan of like cyberpunk or anything like that, just cinematic sound design, uh, really fun, really easy, using a lot of really kind of pretty straightforward synthesis techniques. I'm not doing a lot of like crazy modulation going on here and just a combination of a bunch of effects that I really love to create a sound that I think uh, is really fun to play and really fun to just tweak and change a little bit each time I use it to make it sound uh, a little bit different. So that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed watching that. Uh, if you like the patch, let me know below. If you had things that you would add or change, also let me know in the comment section below. And uh, of course, you can uh, just download it directly from the description. So uh, that's me for this video. Uh, thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you again soon.